somewhat normal in the in the church house we got a good God yeah. let me muse here a little bit break the ice I've, I've been thinking that you know I've used so much hand sanitizer so much Clorox wipes that one of these days I'm going to see an advertisement <laughs> and it's going to say if during the COVID-19 virus that you use this certain brand of <laughs> you may have cancer <laughs> I tell you when Brother Meyer called me I was in the exact position that a preacher needed to be when his pastor called but I was kind of in the I was on my knees but I wasn't praying <laughs> I was uh, going around sealing a metal building and I thought well he said do you have anything I said I can get some because I trust my God. And I trust my pastor. And so in that case, and I kept on, I talked to him a while, and as I went, this message began to unfold. So if it's anything bad, blame it on God and Brother Byer, okay? <laughs> we got a good God, don't we? We got a good God. I'm sorry Brother Byer is not preaching with the visitors here. I'm even sorry Brother Byer's not preaching for the home folk. <laughs> we just like to hear our pastor. You know, I have made up my mind. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm not, I'm not going to walk around in fear. I am going to be careful, but I'm not going to walk around in fear. I'm not going to stop living because I know the one who sits on the throne. Psalms 46 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. 
While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. I still got being, COVID. I still got being, riders. I'm going to praise the Lord. Put not your trust in the princess and in adoring the Son of Man in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to the earth. And that very day, his thought prayers. Happy is he. I said, happy is he that he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Don't put your hope in these situations. Which made heaven and earth, the sea, and that are therein which keepeth true forever, which execute judgment for the oppressed. This is good, it's not as exciting, but which giveth food to the hungry, and the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord opened up the eyes of the blind. Yeah. Come on, there's still miracles in 2020. The Lord raises them that are in the bell. And the Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, you ain't got nothing else to do. Just raise your hands and say, sweet Jesus. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant to praise and it is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart. He findeth the wounds and he telleth the numbers of the stars. He calleth to them to all their names. Great is our Lord of great power and understanding in them. The Lord lifteth up the meat. He cast the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the heart unto our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds. Who prepare rain for the earth. Who make a grass to grow up on the mountains. He's our God. I said he's our God. He giveth in the beasts his food and the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horses and he takes not pleasures in the legs of man. The Lord taketh pleasures in him that fear him. And that's a reverential all in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of thy gate. He has blessed thy children with envy. He make a peace in thy borders. Come on. He make a peace in our borders. Hallelujah. And he filleth them with the finest wheat. He sent them forth his commandment upon her. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. And he scattered the horn frost like ashes. He cast them forth his eyes like morsels. And who can stand before his cold? He sent about his word and melted them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters to flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes of judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt with any nation and has for his judgments they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Why don't you just have a praise break? Come on. That's all we got, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not tapped in yet. Come on. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 thank you Lord, thank you, hallelujah, the young people has realized that their friends need Jesus, we're working on a Bible study, I may be worse than Brother Long, we may take eight weeks on this. Now, Brother Long had a 12-week Bible study going. But I told the young people, Isaiah and Jabin, you're going to learn how to teach this. They want to learn how to teach it. What happens if it takes us all year? It's fine. It's good. Now I'm challenging you a little bit older. 
Get you one. Go over it. Put it in your heart. You're not going to teach anything that's not in your heart. And if you can't read it comfortably to yourself or your friend, your wife, your spouse, you can't give it to a stranger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put it in your heart. Put it in your heart. I'm praying that these two young men teach hundreds of Bible studies. Hallelujah. I told them I want them to teach more than I've ever taught, and I want them to win more souls than I've ever won. Hallelujah. I, because I believe that's what God wants. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord as always did. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm a COVID preacher. I, I get a little excited. I told my wife, I said, Brother Robert may not have to, Brother Christian may not have to vacuum the carpet as much. He may keep his designs. I'm one of these people that likes to get amongst you. So, Brother Byer, when I, Brother Christian, when I start getting out there, y'all just grab a hold of my coat. <laughs> I, know I, I know I'm going that way. I can feel it in my legs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to go to our text. Matthew chapter 19. Very familiar verse of scripture. 23 through 26. If y'all, if y'all, if I read anything today, you know, these are the educated people here. I'm, I'm, I'm the apostle, okay? I'm ignorant and unlearned. <laughs> so I, I don't type well, so I got a voice recognition there. And when I begin to review <laughs> my notes, I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When the Bible says barely, it says barely. <laughs> I don't know either. So, you know, uh, so if y'all hear anything strange, blame it on my program, not me. I have reread it, and it, it looks pretty good, but every once in a while I see it. I mean, you know, I, I had the word exceedingly, and it came out saintly amazed. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good in church. You can still go with it, okay? I could have probably preached it and y'all thought that I was in a different translation. <laughs> All right, laughter is good for the soul, isn't it? Y'all keep on laughing because it <laughs> may get a lot better for your soul. Matthew chapter 19. We're going to begin reading in verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter in to the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, that's, that's one of them, verily, verily, sir. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in to the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were saintly amazed. <laughs> they were exceedingly amazed. Did that sound like saintly? All right. Exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld. Aren't you glad that Jesus takes some time with you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. But Jesus beheld them. With men, this is impossible. Right. But with God, all things yes. are possible. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Byron, if you'll pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today, God. Thank you that it's already anointed. I ask God that you anoint Brother Audrey this morning, anoint his mouth, anoint his mind, God, let your word flow through him, God, and then most importantly, anoint our ears, God, that we might hear your word, God, and receive it and understand it, God, and take it and put it in our hearts and help us, God, to flesh it out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated.
In our text, we see Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler is how we describe it. Through this discourse with Jesus, the rich young ruler began to tell him what he could do. What I have done. I have kept the commandments. I have done this. And Jesus puts a solution for him. And he said, what you need to do is go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. We're, we're going to look today, though, at the portion of Scripture where Jesus said in Matthew 19 and 24, And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now I'm preaching and it's already up there about that divine intervention. And what Jesus was trying to tell this man, it doesn't matter what you do. Unless, you, unless you're accepted by me. Unless you do exactly according to what I see your heart. Then you're not going to make it. You have to understand that, that he was wanting that man to know that wealth was not going to help him. But I'm going to tell you on the flip side, being as poor as Job's turkey, and that's a broken bow Oklahoma word. I don't know what it means exactly. But let me tell you something. It, you can Some people's rich in their mind and poor in their pocketbook. That's right. And then some people's rich in their pocketbook and poor in their mind. But what Jesus was trying to say, without divine intervention, without my help, you're not going to make it. I'm going to tell you, church, without God's help, we're not going to make it. I said, without God's help, we're not going to make it. You can't trust in your bank account. You can't trust in the stimulus check. You're going to have to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to have to say, oh, God, it doesn't matter what I've done yesterday. It doesn't matter what I've done the day before. But today is the day that I need some fresh manna. I'm preaching to somebody. Don't go to God and say, God, I've done some things. It's fresh right now. He sees it. But we don't have to remind him. But here it is, he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. Okay. Now there's, I tell you, you can get sick of study on the eye of the needle. <laughs> Some people says that there was a gate. This is just legend. They never found this gate. And, and that, that, that historically that a camel could get down on its knees and squeeze its bodies together and get its head down and it could go through the eye of the needle. And, and, but you know what? If that was possible, if I could get down into a position or, or if I could work myself around, I could save myself. But God said, it, no, you cannot save yourself. So I, I, I got to put that legend down. And then some people says that the translators... That they got it confused and that, that there's a couple of letters different between the word cable or thread and, and the word camel. And there, he was saying that it would be easier to take a big rope or a cable and stick it in there. But I, I don't know about it. That, but I do know that when you look at it, that Jesus was talking about a sewing needle. And what he was saying is it's impossible for an animal or it's impossible for a big rope to go through it. But let me tell you something with God, people can be saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. See, you, you, you can use every theology. You can use every tactic that you can, but you'll never be saved. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you interpret it. When you look at the scripture, it's impossible for man to save himself. Yes. Right. And he has to have God. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't know why I write notes. <laughs> I, I made this comment. He beheld him. He said, just wait just a minute. Let me teach you something here. With man, this is impossible. 
But with God, all things are possible. Church, we're in some impossible conditions with men to make this relevant. But all things are possible with God. Jeremiah in his prayer in chapter 32 said, O oh Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by great power and hast stretched out your arm and there is nothing hard for thee. Nicodemus, when it comes to... Let me tell you something. I don't know. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you one recipe for COVID. I'm going to give you one recipe for world peace, what you need to do. If you haven't found you an apostolic preacher, and you haven't repented of your sins to God, and you haven't ran to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you haven't let God fill you with the spirit of peace, hallelujah, that's what you need to do first. See, Nicodemus thought he had all religion figured out. And he knew that Jesus thought he was a prophet or something. He came to him by night. I was telling the young people, when you're giving somebody a Bible study, don't go broadcast it all over school. Let them tell. Everybody has the right to make a decision in prophecy. That's so, Nicodemus was a little confused and Jesus explained to him, except you be born again of the water and the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked him, how can a man be born the second time in his mother's womb? Jesus answered, barely, barely. No, barely, barely. I say it to thee, except a man be born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Man cannot give you salvation. You cannot purchase salvation. You cannot earn salvation. I like this. For all you Bernie Sanders supporters, the only thing you can do with salvation is receive. That's pretty good, ain't it? That's, that's off the cuff, but that's pretty good. Just receive it. It's free. Hallelujah. Come on. You don't have to work all your life for salvation. I might change political parties. You don't, you don't, you don't have to. It's painful. Right. The blood of Jesus command, that's right. what they need, ain't it? Right. Hallelujah. Hey, that's the best thing. Right. It's, not only, it's not only giving you from now, but it's good retirement. Right. It's that heavenly retirement plan. Right. Right. I tell you what, it's air conditioned. <laughs> Just receive it. Man, I, that amazed me. <laughs> Maybe they do got it right. Maybe we are quit fighting over things. Maybe we make it too hard. Right. Just receive it. Lift right. your hands. Receive it. That's true. That's true. That's true. Ain't nothing we've done. It's just grace and mercy. Right. Hallelujah. Lift your, come on. I believe that deserves praise. I frustrated myself. I tried to impress God for about six months, but when I just raised my hands and said, Hallelujah. Daddy, you paid for it. Yeah. It's better than college. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, it's not without a made up mind, though. And it's not without obedience to the scripture. Now, we, we had a lady that was in John chapter 4. She was kind of on the dark side of life. Uh, 
And she met Jesus, and, and I'm not going to preach it today because that would take too long. And I'm going to try to be under an hour and a half. And so, uh, he, uh, she, uh, she said, man, you know, I, I've heard all about this and everything. And, and I think I, I want to drink of that water. At, at, after we got through that racial tension. See, we don't need to get excited about racial tension. It's always been around. Sure. It always. We, we just uh, need to keep our eyes on Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. But so, so they, uh, so Jesus said, well, now it is free. And all you have to do is receive it. Now, we're not saying that, but we don't want to put this in a dirty temple. So, so you need to, you need to repent. Oh, well, well, what do you mean repent? Well, you know, adultery has always been wrong. And fornication has always been wrong. Even back to Moses, you know, that's been wrong. And, it, and even before you drank this water, you, you got to handle it. And, and so Jesus says, go call your husband. And she kind of, well, you know, it might be hard to do. <laughs> Have to have multiple cell phones. <laughs> I better quit. <laughs> My wife's already looking. <laughs> Whatever you've done before you came to the Lord, right. that's okay. The blood covers it. But you got to have the blood. And so she said, Well, actually, I don't have a husband. I got this modern relationship situation going on. Jesus said, well, you can't taste this water until you get that. But when you do, you're never going to thirst again. Right. What was he saying? Unless you get some divine intervention, yes. you're always going to be hungry and thirsty for the things of sin. That's right. Let that, let that sink in. I I wish I was out amongst y'all and yelling and spitting today, but but uh, we'll 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 try it a little different. So we we've kind of established something today. First and foremost, God desires for us to receive our initial salvation. We do this through true repentance. Water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Acts 2.38 We must remember nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible with God. All things is possible with God. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 3.20-21 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us, unto him be the glory in the church. We need to be connected to the church. In the church, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages and world, without amen. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, Pastor, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. Brother, Brother Byer, I mean, when, when he goes and he wants dessert, man, I'm a vanilla ice cream person. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I, I can just, that's fine if, if it's there. Um, but Brother Byer, Brother Byer got this imagination and, it, and he has a connection with Sister Dale. And, 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 and he's, he's, I mean, he's just sitting there thinking about things that can be done. Yeah. <laughs> and it's good that he has some saintly things, <laughs> saintly people that, that exceedingly, you know, yeah. will, will make that happen. Don't limit God. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Well, I got Uncle Andrew that hasn't walked in the church in three years. 30 years, 60 years. No problem. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Your God wants to exceed what you can think or ask. So when this pea brain is praying for Henrietta, my God is talking about Old Mogey County. He's talking about Oklahoma. See, we're never gonna, we're never gonna do anything bigger than him. He's just gonna keep on increasing and increasing. We're in the year 2020, and I know y'all know that. A lot of things have been said about this year, things like 2020 vision, leading us to believe this would be the perfect year. In the eye, you think not. <laughs> 2020 like perfect vision and I know there's arguments about that but that's what I put and then the disaster hits yep. COVID on the round page world leaders stress local leaders stress church people fearful right. you're uneasy we've had ones we've lost people that we love yes. friends and acquaintances this deadly pandemic has got a hold of our heart. They're talking about another wave. That's real. We can't, we're not going around saying, oh, unless we claim it, it's happening. It's happening, okay? We don't have a magic cure for it. But we got Jesus. We got divine intervention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, to add to it, we have the riots, the ravishing of towns and communities and inner cities with hate, the disloyalty towards leadership. We've got world chaos and turmoil, looting in the street, brick throwing, a sure uneasiness all around us, yet we must not lose sight in the midst of the turmoil, right. in the midst of the adversity, right. in the midst of the storm, nothing is too hard for God. Right. Let it sink in. God still has control. Yes. There's nothing too hard for our God. Right. God still has a perfect vision for the church. Yes. Yes. COVID yes. don't bother him. He's lived through way, he's eternal, I know, but, but he's seen way more than COVID. The church in the middle of this turmoil in the midst of all this tempest that surrounds us. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 And I say also thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I believe we can say COVID won't prevail against it. Smallpox didn't prevail against it. We still got a church. Right. Come on. Flu is, it hasn't prevailed against the church. We need to understand that God still sits on the throne. He yes. still wants to help the yes. church. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Now, I, I read this and prepared, and man, it just nearly, I'd be amongst y'all right now if this all wasn't happening. Uh, Man, I, I read this illustration, this quote. Darkness comes in the middle of it. The future looks blank. The temptation to quit is huge. Don't come. Don't come. You are in good company. You will argue with yourself that there is no way forward. But with God, nothing is impossible. He has more ropes and ladders and tunnels out of pits than you can conceive. Right. Pray without ceasing! Exclamation point. Hope! Exclamation point. John Piper. I don't know Mr. Piper, but I do agree with one thing. My God has a way out. Yes. Yes. I said my God has a way out. 1 yes. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. 
Therefore you have no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted and come that you are able, but with temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now I know that us apostolics, we look at that and we, we use that scripture when we're not doing exactly right. When we're about to fall into sin and stuff, and we'll say, there's a way out. There's a way out. But let me tell you, that word temptation, and I'm not disagreeing with that meaning, but that word temptation means adversity. There's no adversity that comes to the church. Whether, whether it's a disease, whether, whether it's social pressure, whether it's family problems, there's no adversity that comes to the church that God, He don't have a rope over here and He don't have a ladder over here. He don't have a tunnel under here that you can get out of. God has a way of escape and we just need to raise our hands and say, show me Jesus. Show me Jesus the way of escape. Nothing's too hard for our God. Nothing's impossible for our God. The Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. That we must believe that He is an rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. No matter what our nation is going through, no matter what our community is going through, the church will march victorious. Come on. It has to be more than words. I tell the boys when we're working on this Bible study, it has to be more than words. But inside your inner being, there has to be something burned inside of you that my God's going to provide. You, know, you need to say it. It's not, it's not your daddy's God. It's, it's not the God of, of the apostolic church of this society, but it's your God. My God's going to provide. I don't get nothing done when I pray in generality. But when I begin to say, my God's going to survive, provide. My God's going to take me through. My God's going to bring me through this dilemma. You may have some financial problems. Don't look for that stimulus check, but look for Jesus Christ. You may have some health problems. I'm not telling you not to go to a doctor. But I always say, oh God, you're going to be the one to provide. If he can cure cancer, he can cure COVID. If he can cure leukemia, he can cure anything. My God's going to survive. Henrietta, we heard it. Gospel Tabernacle, we heard it again by another preacher. I said this in prayer meeting. God sent us a message. We got to get a hold of it. Amen. The best is yet to come. Yes. The best is yet to come. Thank God for every elder, but the best is yet to come. Yes. Right, right, right. God will save the lost. Not only our family, but our friends. Right. Not only our friends, but our community. Right. Not only our community, but the other communities around us. Right. God wants to save it. As far as these rights, let me say it like this. Red and yellow, black and white, we are precious in His sight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. It ain't time for us. To, I don't agree with everything, but let me tell you, black lives matter, white lives matter, all souls matter to the church. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm being long today. Uh, don't preach me next month. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm preaching to somebody today. Now listen. I know I've had some fun. It's good to get some humor going. That way y'all don't sleep. And it'd be real bad if I go to sleep. And sometimes in my messages, I have felt like going to sleep. Sometimes I felt like just laying the microphone down and saying somebody else needs to finish this. I'm preaching to somebody today. You've lost hope. You let fear grip your heart. You're on the end of your hope. And God gave me this illustration. You have a knot above you and below you. Picture that rope in your mind. 
You sing the ropes and knots on it, the people cries. You're about halfway up, and you're hanging on for dear life. And in your mind, you feel like you're safe, but you're not. You're paralyzed. Fear has a hold of your heart. You want a reason that you're safe, but you're not in God's will. Because the knot that's above you is the devil, keeping you from moving. And the knot below you is your flesh. And you feel this place of safety, but God's telling you to let go. And He's going to take care of you. Lift your hands to the Lord. God is going to be stepping into your situation. He's bidding you to come just as He bid Peter to come after his storm and walk on the water with Him. Don't be afraid. Let go of that rope. God will divinely intervene in your life. Acts chapter 27, verse 14. This is where this message was burning my heart. The Bible tells us that Paul was a prisoner and they were taken into Rome and a tempest wind called, y'all say bicycle around here, right? I'm allowed to say bicycle. Okay. Oh, y'all, y'all get y'all's dictionary and lexicon out and figure that word out. Yeah. Aren't you glad that they call them Harvey and stuff like that nowadays? The Bible tells us that the Apostle Paul was warned by God not to sell. And he tried to tell them, isn't it amazing what the church knows? But because there was a peaceful wind out of the south, the decision to sell was made. And they began their journey. They began their voyage. Also, Paul already told them there's going to be much hurt. And then all of a sudden, that peaceful wind out of the south became a whirlwind, a typhoon on water, and it began to blow from the north. The word temptious means adversity. A whirlwind of adversity surrounded them. The Apostle Paul, and listen to me, the Apostle Paul warned that the only way that the people would survive would be by staying in the ship. Let me say this today. Don't think that you're going to escape and survive the adversity of this world and of this generation and of this present day by leaving the ship. And the ship is the church. Aren't you glad for ministers? Just as these men who thought that they would survive was about to get on lifeboats in Acts chapter 27, verse 31. Paul said to the centurion soldiers, please have them abide in the ship. You cannot be saved. What was he saying without divine intervention? Without you staying in the will of God, you're not going to be saved. The apostle was saying it's impossible for you to be saved on your own, but it is possible to be saved with God. Matthew chapter 14, verse 21. I originally wasn't going to read this, but I, I believe that I should. I'm trying to hasten to a close. We're a whole lot further than we was but when I started. God wants to work today. He always wants to work. Yes, yes. Let me start reading about verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get in the ship and to go before Him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. 
and the evening was come, he was there alone. The commandment was to go to the other side. There was a destination. God has a destination for you today. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. See, it's not necessarily our starting point and our ending point. It's when we get in the midst of the sea that things get a little dangerous. Life has some curves. Life has some things that, that just comes up unexpectedly. My old pastor used to say, bad things happen to good people. It's not because of sin or anything. But the winds begin to crash by you. Yeah. And you begin to start devising plans of how to bail the water out away from your problems. You begin to think, how, what can I do? Just like the rich young ruler. It's a little different scenario. But we must remember we always need divine intervention. Yes. That we have to take me out of the equation and put God there first and foremost right. and let God plug us in the equation how he wants us plugged in. Let's be sensitive to the Lord just a little bit longer. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Church, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been in the storm. I've been confused in situations and if I'm not careful, I don't know when Jesus is in the situation. Because I'm fighting the storm. What is happening in the U.S. and the world, if we're not careful, we'll be fighting the storm. And we won't understand that Jesus is there. We'll just think that he's a ghost. We as apostolics, we as the church, have to understand when the water gets so hard on us and the trouble gets so bad that Jesus is going to be right there. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be a good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee in the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind bolsters, he was afraid. We got to keep on depending on him. Even when he's invited us, even when he's called us to do something, we got to understand we cannot do it in our flesh. But we got to trust in the Lord. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked out of the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. That's all the rich young ruler would have had to cry. Lord, save me. And immediately, Divine intervention came. Jesus stretched forth his hand. Right. And they began to walk together. Lift your hands unto the Lord of glory. Isaiah chapter 41 and 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be thou dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. Brother Audrey. What are you trying to say? The adversity is here. The boisterous winds are blowing. I honestly believe that they will continue. Don't lose sight of Jesus.
we had ancestors that went around preaching an end time message. We don't hear that as much as what we used to. Right or wrong, it's probably not politically correct to tell people that your head might be chopped off. And I'm not trying to go pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. But there was a keenness to people at one time. They understood they needed divine intervention. I honestly believe, and I've said this to pastors, and I'm not predicting anything, but the control that the government put upon us during this time in my lifetime is closer to where I could have seen the mark of the beast begin to be ushered in. Yes. I mean, it was just a moment. It, it wasn't even days. It was hours that we're able to shut down air travel. We're able to shut down commerce. I'm not worried about that, okay? I'm glad that men like this good brethren is safe and at home. Don't get me wrong. And I'm concerned for people. But I'm not worried. Because I know that if I'll keep my eyes on Jesus, and if I'll cry out, Lord, save me, Divine intervention is on the way. Right. Will you stand with me? God's strengthening. He's renewing right now. I appreciate everything the administration has done. But they're not my Savior. I don't want to get hatred in my heart towards somebody because of the race or situation or what's happening in these protests. I need more of you, God. I need more of you. Nothing else matters. I need more of you. I believe we need to pray, church. Pray for yourself today. But in the midst of this, they're going to be running to the church. And they need the mind of God. My boy told me, I'm not scared of death per se, but I'm scared of dying because I'm lost. Shake him even more than that, God. Give him nightmares. I don't care. He must be saved. Got another kid, folks, and another son. They must be saved. I'm talking to a man that don't believe in eternity right now. God, he must be saved. They need divine intervention. Shakaye Lolobohai. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Prayer meeting doesn't just have to happen on Tuesday night. But we need to get a hold of God right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. I want to hear these waters trouble. People baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to hear them speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let the winds of adversity blow. But the church knows what's going to happen. God's going to divinely intervene and souls are going to be saved. Souls are going to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I apologize if I was too long. But I don't apologize for anything that God has given. Church, I want to tell us every morning we need to shake ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not trying to preach doomsday. 
doomsday is out there. I'm preaching hope. Keep your hope in the Lord. I'm looking for that tunnel. I'm looking for that rope. I'm looking for that ladder in every situation. Oh, mighty God, in the name of Jesus.